Hello there you guys, welcome to one of my videos. Going to be giving you the player ratings for Manchester United's 2-0 defeat to Manchester City at Old Trafford. So I'll start with David De Gea. I'll give David De Gea an 8 out of 10. De Gea saved us from and humiliation. I recall De Gea making four good saves in that first half to deny Chancello twice. He also denied Gabriel Jesus and he also denied Kevin De Bruyne. De Gea was partly to blame, though, for Manchester City's second goal by Bernardo Silva. De Gea was beaten at his near post. De Gea was blameless for the own goal by Eric Bailly. De Gea was in goal in the 2-2 draw against Atalanta. Yeah, he should have saved Atalanta's opening goal. Did make some good saves against Atalanta. Uh, De Gea was in goal last weekend against Tottenham. Had very little to do in that one. But De Gea's done really, really well this season so far to his credit uh, don't forget De Gea reclaimed the number one spot back and in the summer he decided to cut short his holiday by two weeks to fight for a starting place he said De Gea is determined to fight for his Man United future De Gea has won everything domestically at the football club He's made over 500 appearances for Man United in all competitions. Today's game was De Gea's 350th appearance in the Premier League. This season is De Gea's 11th season at Man United, so he's been a long serve and he's been with us since the Ferguson era. He's got under two years left on his contract and he receives £375,000 a week. Now, Eric Bailly, he's going to get a 2 out of 10. He was horrendous today. Revert back to what I said on the match reaction. Bailly obviously scored a known goal. But his overall performance was just poor. Bailly actually played very well in the 2-2 draw against Atalanta. In that game, Bailly made some good blocks and some good interventions. Bailly also played well in the game against West Ham in the Carabao Cup earlier on this season. I think today's game was Bailly's third appearance of the season so far. But despite his poor performance today, I still think Bay is a very good centre-half. My only element of concern about him is injury-prone, so in that aspect, he's a liability. Towards the end of last season, Bay signed a new contract with Man United till 2024. There's an option of a further year. bailly has been at the club now for like five and a half years. Manchester United paid around £30 million for him from Villarreal back in 2016. Yeah, so just a 2 out of 10 for Bailly, unfortunately. Victor Lindelof, he's going to get a 3 out of 10. He was very, very poor today. Uh, Lindelof nearly scored an own goal. Uh, De Gea obviously saved it with his feet. I've got my strong reservations about Victor Lindelof. 
I think Manchester United need to offload Lindelof next year. But as far as I know, there's been no rumours of him leaving the club. Lindelof's been at Manchester United for like four and a half years. We got Lindelof from Benfica back in 2017 for £31 million. Harry Maguire... He's going to get a 3 out of 10. He was very, very poor today. Maguire has been poor in a lot of games so far this season. And he's been very poor since he come back from that calf injury. I think Harry Maguire's best game so far this season was the 3-0 win against Tottenham last weekend. Manchester United certainly overpaid for Harry Maguire. Got him in a deal worth £80 million. So he's the most expensive centre-half in the world at the moment and he's the second most expensive signing at the club. Um, I do recall Maguire having a chance in the game today. Um, the chance came early on. It was from a set-piece. Maguire just headed it wide. Now, Luke Shaw, he's going to get a 3 out of 10. He was very, very poor today. I think Luke Shaw was the main culprit for Manchester City's second goal by Bernardo Silva. Luke Shaw just looked all over the place today. Uh, by the way, Luke Shaw went off with injury in the game. And he did get replaced by Alex Tellez. Luke Shaw has been out of form this season so far. Where's the Luke Shaw from last season? Revert back to what I said before. Because last season, Luke Shaw was absolutely superb. He was far superior last season to how he has been so far this season. I think Luke Shaw's best game so far this season was the game against Tottenham last weekend, even though he did get booked in that game. Shaw's been a long-serving player at Manchester United. He's enjoyed like seven and a half years at the club. And he's been our first-choice left-back for a while, and he still remains our first-choice left-back despite the arrival of Alex Tellez. Shaw's got under two years left on his contract at Man United. Um, obviously, again today, Luke Shaw was playing as a left wing back. Now, moving on to Anwan Basaka. He's going to get a 4 out of 10. I thought he was very, very poor today. It's a shame, really, because I think Basaka has been in scintillating form in recent weeks. You know, I thought Pesaka played well in the 2-2 draw against Atalanta and he played well in the 3-0 win against Tottenham last weekend. There's definitely aspects of Anwan Pesaka's game that needs to improve. You know, he's got to get forward a hell of a lot more. His positioning's got to improve. I think his crossing's got to improve. So there you go. I think defensively, though, Pesaka is superb. This season is Anwan Pesaka's third full season at Man United. We've got Pesaka in a deal worth £50 million from Crystal Palace back in the summer of 2019. He is one of the best right-backs we've had, though, since Gary Neville. We'll revert back to what I've mentioned before. Obviously, today, Pesaka was playing as a right wing-back. Now, Fred... He's going to get a 3 out of 10. Very, very poor today. You know, Fred just looked lost for ideas. Um, he was very, very poor when he had the ball. 
I think Manchester United need to sell Fred next year because he's not good enough to represent the club. Manchester United overpaid for Fred as well, got him for fifty million from Shat to Donetsk. I've got to make an admission though regarding Fred. During his time in Ukraine, he was a world class player. Let's move on to McTominay. He's going to get a three out of ten. Poor today. He was totally outclassed in that midfield. In regards to McTominay, I do think he needs more time at the club because he's still young, he's got a lot of development in him. McTominay has been part of the club for a long time as it stands. Just after the first lockdown last year, he signed a new five-year contract with Man United, so reflecting on that, he did commit his future to the club. He has had some good games at Man United's McTominay, but... Um, Solskjaer's obviously been heavily criticised for persistently playing Fred and McTominay in the centre midfield. Now let's move on to Bruno Fernandes. He's going to get a 4 out of 10. Um, he was very, very poor today. Uh, couldn't produce his usual magic. Fernandez looked very sloppy when he had the ball. He gave the ball away quite a few times as well in the game. There's been quite a few games where Fernandez has looked off the pace. But he's had a lot of consistent games at Man United as well on the other side of things. Uh, Fernandez played well in the 2 2 draw against Atalanta. Um, he actually got an assist in that game for Ronaldo's first goal. It was a lovely back heel by Bruno Fernandes. Fernandes played very well in the 3-0 win against Tottenham last weekend. Uh, Fernandes did play a part in two of the goals against Tottenham. Fernandes starts the vast majority of Manchester United's games. Fernandez has been a Manchester United player for almost two years now. We got him from Sport in Lisbon back in January 2020. You know, last season, Fernandez won Player of the Year and he's won Player of the Month quite a few times, reflecting on his good performances. Earlier on this season, Fernandez did make it clear that he wants to stay at Manchester United. And when he came in, Fernandez, he said, I've come to Manchester to win trophies. At the moment, Fernandez has got a contract with Man United till 2025. There's an option of a further 12 months. Now, moving on to Cristiano Ronaldo. He's going to get a 5 out of 10. Ronaldo did have two good chances in the game. The first chance from Ronaldo was a volley, produced a good save by Edison. And Ronaldo's second chance uh, was actually offside, but obviously Edison still made a good save. But apart from that, Ronaldo was anonymous. You know, Ronaldo wasn't getting enough service at all in the game today. And Ronaldo, did very, very well in the 2-2 draw against Atalanta. Because Ronaldo scored twice in stoppage time at the end of both halves against Atalanta. So obviously then, Ronaldo saved Ole Gunnar Solskjaer. Ronaldo scored the winner in the reverse fixture against Atalanta at Old Trafford. Um, he scored the winner against Villarreal earlier on this season as well. And Ronaldo scored a very good volley last week in the 3-0 win against Tottenham. He had a disallowed goal in the game against Tottenham and also got an assist against Tottenham. That's his first assist since he re-signed for the club. 
Don't forget, Ronaldo recently got named Manchester United's Player of the Month for October. So that's back-to-back -back awards now for Ronaldo. Because back in September, Ronaldo got named Premier League Player of the Month. Uh, Ronaldo has scored nine goals since his, in all competitions since he re-signed for Manchester United. He's the best player in the world overall. You know, we've got Ronaldo for 19.8 million with add-ons included. Ronaldo wears a number seven shirt. Ronaldo has got a contract with Man United till 2023. There's an option of a further year. Ronaldo receives £480,000 a week at Man United, so at the moment is the highest earner at the club. Uh, Mason Greenwood, he's going to get just a 6 out of 10. Pretty average performance by him. Obviously, he was playing alongside Ronaldo today. Greenwood played in the 2-2 draw against Atalanta. Obviously, he didn't start, but he did come on. and He got an assist for Ronaldo's second goal against Atalanta. Mason Greenwood didn't play any part in the 3-0 win against Tottenham last weekend. Greenwood has four goals in the league so far this season. He scored a stunning goal in the 4-2 defeat to Leicester earlier on this season. At one point, though, Greenwood did go a while without scoring, but despite that, he's been a revelation since he broke into our senior squad. Greenwood made his senior debut for Man United back in 2019. He's been a United player since the age of seven. And last season, Greenwood signed a new four-year contract. Obviously, we brought substitutions on in the game. Obviously, Telez come on for the injured Luke Shaw. I'll give Telez just a five out of ten. Telez could have conceded a penalty. Um, it wasn't a penalty anyway because Telez did w just win the ball. Um, I think Telez is leaving Manchester United next year because Telez doesn't really get in the team, does it? Telez will only play if Luke Shaw's not available. Uh, Telez was out of injury earlier on this season. The reason Man United brought Telez in was to provide competition for Luke Shaw. You know, we got to Les last year from Porto, got him for 15.4 million. But yeah, he's done well in the games he's been involved in for Man United, I'd say. Marcus Rashford also came on in the game. Give him a 6 out of 10. Didn't do too bad when he came on. Uh, I've got to say, Rashford was poor. In the 2-2 draw against Atalanta. Um, he didn't start against Tottenham last weekend. But he did come off the bench and make an impact. He scored Manchester United's third goal. And it was a breakaway goal. Rashford's done well in a few games since he's come back. But on the other side of things. He's had poor games as well. Don't forget, at one point, Rashford was out with a shoulder injury for a while, and at one point, he had to have an operation on his shoulder. Rashford's been part of the club for a long time. He's been a United player since the age of seven, and he's been in our senior squad since 2016. Rashford's got a contract with Man United till 2023. Um, Donny van der Beek... Move on to him. He came on in the game. I'll give Donny van der Beek a 7 out of 10 because I thought he actually made an impact impact when he came on. He really, really did. You know, he made some good runs and that. I'm surprised Donny van der Beek came on. Uh, Donny van der Beek also came on in the 2-2 draw against Atalanta and he did well when he came on in that one. You know, Solskjaer, though, has to start Van der Beek, especially in the Premier League, because he's a very good player. I think Van der Beek's leaving Man United in January because he's not getting enough game time. And obviously, prior to the game against Liverpool, 
you know, Solskjaer did admit that Van der Beek is frustrated and disappointed over his situation at Old Trafford. Earlier on this season, it said Van der Beek was furious with Solskjaer. Van der Beek's enjoyed a difficult, what, 19 months now at Man United. This season is Van der Beek's second full season at Man United. You know, we got him for, what, 40 million with add-ons included. He's got a contract to Man United till 2025. There's an option of a further year, and he's versatile. He can play in three different roles. And we also saw Jaden Sancho come on in the game. I'll give him a 7 out of 10. You know, to be fair to Sancho, I thought he did well when he came on. You know, he was trying, you know, to retrieve the ball back and that. He kept the ball quite well as well when he came on. Uh, as Jaden Sancho got a future at Manchester United, you know, there's a lot of games that Jaden Sancho doesn't even start. And, you know, Sancho hasn't enjoyed the best of starts to his Manchester United career. But obviously, in quite a few games this season when Solskjaer's played Sancho, you know, he's persistently played him out of position. Obviously, fans have been getting on Sancho's back. I said Sancho will do well at Man United, providing that he's used correctly. It does take some players' time to settle in, though, doesn't it? You know, we got Jadon Sancho in a deal worth £78 million with add-ons included. You know, he's got a contract to Man United till June 2026 There's an option of a further year. So there you go. That's your player ratings for Manchester United's 2-0 defeat to Manchester City. Uh, like I mentioned on the match reaction note, it was an abysmal performance by Manchester United today. Obviously, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer stuck with the 3-5-2 formation. I was surprised in that aspect because I thought Solskjaer would have reverted back to the 4-2-3-1 formation. That's three games now in a row that we've gone with the 3-5-2 formation, but... We're going to find it difficult to stick with this formation, revert back to what I've said before. I think it's the end of Ole Gunnar Solskjaer as Manchester United manager. Um, I've got to give Manchester City um, a lot of credit. I thought they was absolutely sensational today. They dominated every aspect of that game. Like I mentioned, you know, City had very good chances. Uh, they passed the ball really, really well. They kept the ball well and City dominated the possession. Obviously, Chancello for City, I think he got man of the match. Um, obviously, he made some good runs down that flank. You know, operated a lot of space as well. Put some good crosses into the box. You know, he got the assist for Bernardo's second Bernardo Silva's second goal. Uh, Bernardo Silva put a good performance out today for Manchester City. Uh, Gundogan was good today. Uh, De Bruyne was also good today. Um, I thought Foden did well today as well. You know, Foden could have scored for Manchester City. He hit the post. John Stones did quite well for City. You know, he had a good chance in the game, so City could have scored then. Obviously, City were missing Ferran Torres. Obviously, he's the only injured player Man City have got. Uh, Ferran Torres is out with injury until January 2022. Obviously, there was no Laporte playing for City today because he was suspended. Uh, Laporte got sent off in Man City's 2-0 defeat to Crystal Palace last weekend. Today, it was the 186th Manchester derby. Um, obviously, there was no Varane today for Man United. Uh, Varane is out for a month with a hamstring injury because Varane came off injured in the first half in the 2-2 draw against Atalanta. Varane only just come back from a groin injury not so long ago and he was out for a few weeks with that groin injury. Varane actually made his return against Tottenham and, to his credit, put a good performance out. Obviously, there was no Paul Popper playing today because Paul Popper is suspended. 
Uh, Pop has now got one game to serve out of the three match ban he got. Pogba did play in the 2-2 draw against Atalanta and I thought his performance was abysmal in that game. You know, he made a lot of errors and he just looked very, very sloppy. But reflecting on that poor performance he put out against Atalanta, Pogba received a lot of criticism. Um, I think Paul Pogba is leaving Manchester United anyway next summer on a free transfer because Pogba's already said that he wants out and he's refusing to sign a new contract. And Mark Ogden said not so long ago that Man United are prepared to let Paul Pogba leave on a free transfer next summer after accepting that the midfielder will not sign a contract. Romano said after the 5-0 defeat to Liverpool that Pogba wants Solskjaer sacked. Pogba's current contract at Man United expires next summer. Before the start of this season, Pogba rejected a new Man United contract. So there you go. So obviously now uh, we're heading into the international break. Obviously after the international break, Manchester United play Watford. But in regards to Ole Gunnar Solskjaer, he definitely has to go now. Um, who's going to replace Solskjaer though um, there has obviously been talks of Zidane possibly coming in he said not so long ago that Manchester United have begun talks with Zinedine Zidane and reports from Spain said that Zinedine Zidane rejected the Newcastle job as he's waiting for the Manchester United or France job reports from Spain did say though earlier on this season that Zidane is not interested in becoming Manchester United manager and it did mention that he's enjoying life away from football management I'd certainly take Zidane at Manchester United I think Zidane would be capable of winning trophies if he came to Man United and he'd get us back to that level where we should be at and Zidane would suit the strappings of the club so they are the reasons. Zidane is managerless because he left Real Madrid in the summer. Zidane's got a good pedigree behind him. Look at the amount of silverware he won when he was manager of Real Madrid. Zidane is a far superior manager to Solskjaer. Um, Eric Ten Hag, uh, there's also been talks about him coming in. Um, I've got to admire the work he has done at Ajax. Obviously Manchester United wanted Antonio Conte but obviously we can't get Conte because he's Tottenham's manager. You know if we just had Solskjaer after the 5-0 defeat to Liverpool a, few week, a couple of weeks ago now we'd have probably got Conte. We really really would. I think if Solskjaer cared about the club he would resign. But I don't think he's going to resign, that's the problem. You know, when Man United sack Solskjaer, as you all know, they'll have to pay Solskjaer £7.5 million because in the summer he signed a new contract with the club until 2024. There's an option of a further year and we certainly made a mistake giving Solskjaer that contract. Solskjaer is under intense pressure now after that 2-0 loss today to Man City but he was under pressure going into the game today against Man City anyway but obviously he's under more pressure now Solskjaer's had long enough as Manchester United manager he's been Manchester United manager for almost three years now and you know this season is Solskjaer's third full season as Man United manager and I did say at the start of this season that this season was going to be massive for him but I just feel as though that the expectations are far too high for Solskjaer to exceed at Manchester United. Solskjaer is in a position that he shouldn't even be in. And Solskjaer, he's not capable of winning trophies as Man United manager. Of course we all want Solskjaer to succeed as Man United manager, but obviously he's not going to. But I adore Solskjaer, just like all Man United fans do. Reflecting on what he's done for the club, Solskjaer's a legend of the club at the end of the day. He enjoyed 11 years as a player for Man United. He flourished under Ferguson's guidance. 
So anyway guys, that's everything to update for today. Um, I'll be doing some more videos soon. Drop your comments, likes below on the channel. If you do, consider subscribe as always and take care. God bless and I'll see you all again very, very soon.